All right, guys, it's four days after my half marathon in Göteborg, Sweden. Uh, I had a blast. I had a great time traveling there with my dad, running the race, enjoying the vibes. But I am disappointed as well because I wasn't able to go sub 130, which was my big goal. And I wasn't even able to go faster than my personal best. So it was a big disaster kind of for me as, as a race. Uh, I made some mistakes and uh, I want to talk about my race experience, how it felt, what I learned. And of course, uh, what are some of those mistakes that I made uh, in this race? So let's get into it. First of all, some context, uh, I mean, epic race, hundreds and thousands of people out cheering, going through the whole city of Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, I went there with my dad, we took the train together, we stayed in a hotel, we had an awesome time together just sharing this experience. He ran the race, I ran the race. He did a great race, I did a poor race, but you know, all in all, we just, it was a great adventure and I'm super happy about the experience. Now, the race itself didn't go as planned, let's just put it that way. I started off, um, right, I wanted to go sub 130. So that's a pace of uh, four minutes and 15 seconds per kilometer. And so I, I had my plan and I was like, okay, I'm gonna execute. So right off the starting line, I was like, I'm gonna either be able to hold that pace or not. As it turns out, I was not able to hold that pace for a variety of reasons, but I thought so in the beginning. So I just went off and I tried. 4.15 per kilometer, I came through 5K in something like 21.30, 21.40. So a little bit behind goal pace, but that made sense because there was a lot of hills on that first 5K. And uh, yeah, I was just feeling epic, feeling great, uh, passing my dad who was watching. And I was just like, yeah, I feel awesome. Um, and yeah, I was in start group number three. So there was the elites and the first group. They're already gone. Group two, gone. And then I was at the, at the front of uh, group number three. Um, qualified because of my half marathon. I did a 133.38 half marathon in Oslo in September last year, so that qualified me to be in that starting group. And so that was cool. And then, yeah, I headed off 5K, and uh, yeah, I was like, it's it's going fast, I'm, it's tough, but I can do this. Then between 5K and 10K, I was starting to really feel it. It was getting harder, a little bit too hard. I was like, this this is hard, why, why is it so hard? <laughs> I should be able to hold this pace. My breathing was fine not really struggling with breathing or anything, but uh, it did feel hard. And as I c came through 10K, uh, I was s still a little bit uh, behind goal pace. I've slowed down even a little bit more, which was strange because uh, the those 5K should have been faster, but okay, um, yeah, I'm still somewhat in the ballpark pace uh, type of range. Um, but I was starting to think, oh my God, this is just halfway and I'm, I'm feeling like this because I was really starting to feel tired and it was really tough. Um, and from there on, it just got worse. Okay, so um, I was progressively slowing down, really, really struggling to hold the pace. And as I came th through 15, it was like, I was a broken man. Okay, I, I was I realized I cannot go sub 130 and I was just holding on for dear life trying to make uh, the PB and um, so yeah, it was just at that point really really bad my it was as if my legs weren't able to move right my will power was there I didn't give up I wanted to move but my legs just wouldn't listen. No matter how much I pushed, I just wasn't able to maintain that pace. So it was a strange experience. H hardest, toughest race of my life and those last five kilometers were just absolutely brutal. Um, progressively slowed down to a point where I was actually running my easy pace. My, my, you know, my easy pace is like 5.10 to 5.30 per kilometer, um, uh, minutes per kilometer. Um, and that's the pace I was running, even though my effort level was just like 
maximum i was i was my, my heart rate was like 195 i think i topped that at like 201 at one point in terms of heart rate so i was like really giving it my all and adrenaline was just rushing through my blood and still i was not able to hold any faster pace than my slow easy pace and there was a lot of hills more hills than i thought and we'll get to that um that's one of my excuses you see uh, and it's just got harder and harder and harder and people were passing me and I was just, I was broken, okay? I'll put some pictures here of uh, my, my, from the race so you can see what kind of state I was in. I was struggling, I was, it was painful, it was the, it was so hard. And I was a little depressed as well because I, I realized I wasn't able to, to do uh, sub 130. Anyway, made it to the finish line, uh, barely, and uh, yeah, just, uh, whew, that was a tough, tough experience. But I didn't give up. I did not give up. Uh, I kept going and kept going and kept going, uh, no matter how slow I went. Ended up running 134.48, which is disappointing, but I mean, obvi obviously still pretty fast in the grand scheme of things. I, I think I, I finished something like top, top 12% of the whole race i mean the fastest 12 percent even even more I, maybe top 10 I, I percent i i don't remember but i mean relatively speaking it's still a pretty fast time obviously but uh relative to my goals and my fitness level i feel like i didn't really run to my potential now let's talk a little bit about why i think that happened well first of all the most important reason that i realized afterwards was i felt like this was hillier than I thought. I was certain because I'd looked at a Strava segment from the race, uh, the whole race uh, prior to the race. I, was, I saw it said 71 or around 70 meters of elevation. I was like 70 meters of elevation. That's pretty flat. That is, pr that is not too bad. So I was expecting 70 meters for the whole race, right? And I was like, That's, that doesn't make sense. This felt like it was much more hillier than that. And I asked the race um, organizers and they actually told me it, it was actually 204 meters of elevation, which is like way more than twice. It's like almost three times as much elevation as I planned on. And I was like, what? And I realized actually on Strava segments, the elevation difference on a segment is actually the difference between the lowest point and the highest point. It's not actually a cumulative elevation gain number. So that's good to know so already there we can see the biggest and the main reason why i actually didn't run as well as i hoped because if i knew that was 204 meters as opposed to 71 i would already say i'm not gonna do sub 130 because i i knew and i still feel like i am at that fitness level at the moment where on a perfect day on a pretty flat course i could go sub 130 but I'm just on that edge, as I told you guys in my pre-race video. I'm just on that edge. And so 204 meters of elevation, that's too much. I could not go sub 130 on, on a course like that. If I knew that, I would probably rather say something like maybe one, one, uh, 131, right? Or perhaps 132 even. Who knows? I would definitely adjust my goal. And knowing that you could now realize how going out at a 415 pace, going out at a sub 130 pace on a course like that with tons of hills, and especially the first five to 10K had a lot of hills, that's suicide. That's basically really bad pacing. So I ended up literally burning through all my reserves just too quickly and probably building up too much lactate and probably uh, shooting my legs as well because Actually, when I look at my Strava data, I could see that I'm actually sometimes running like 330 pace, 340 pace. That's a pace I've never really run in a downhill before. And so on the downhills on this first part of the race, I was just hammering it. And I, I'm, I'm thinking that might have just, it was too much for my muscles. So whether or not the slowing, the progressively slowing down throughout the race was due to lactate buildup in the legs, uh, causing acidity and not being able to use the enzymes to create ATP in the legs, etc., or whether or not it was due to that muscle damage from the hard downhills, I don't know. But one thing is for sure, I was running too fast in those first few kilometers 
uh, um, but of course if it was indeed a flat race perhaps I would have been able to sustain it but it wasn't and so yeah bad pacing we could we could we could call it I'm just figuring out the the splits here looking at my watch so we can call it bad pacing uh, but of course it's actually a mixture of bad well it, it is bad pacing but not because I wasn't able to control the pace I was pretty spot on in terms of pace control actually I was a little bit too fast even for a sub 30 uh, half marathon but uh, pacing was okay but because I had wrong information the whole strategy was uh, was problematic listen to my splits here from the race first kilometer 408 second 406 third 415 4th, 414, 427, 429, 404, 415, 426, 415, 418, 424, 427, slowing down, 436, 425, 444, 511, 512, 451, 507, and finally 430. So you can see how I was slowing down there. And those first few kilometers were definitely too fast for the course. But even if I was able to run a, a sub 130 on a flat course, it would still be too fast. So that's the biggest reason. My pacing was just off and my information was, was wrong. I based it on the wrong information. Poor planning on my part. Now, um, there are other factors too. I have a note here. Let's just take a quick look. Uh, if you if you follow me on Strava, there's a link in the description. You can you can see all the details from my training, etc., and from the race. I was not able to take in enough water at the aid stations. I need to practice drinking those cups. Those cups are so difficult to just grab and drink while running. I had to stop to be able to even drink anything. So I definitely didn't r drink enough water. And considering the fact that it was actually you know, um, 17 or 18 degrees Celsius, which is not super hot, but it's definitely not ideal either. It's on the warm side and the humidity was 85%. Okay. So that means <clears throat> that's another factor as well. Probably kept me, you know, if, if it's just a few seconds per kilometer, just a couple of seconds per kilometer, even it's enough to tip me uh, towards a slower uh, race, right? Because remember I said I'm in sub 130 shape on a perfect day, but this was not a perfect day in terms of weather. It was not too bad, could have been worse for sure, but also could have been better. Uh, and the fact that I was not able to drink enough in this type of weather made it even worse probably. Uh, I was not able to take in enough sugar either because I was doing a stupid mistake of putting too much salt in my drink mix. Uh, so that it tasted horrible and I just wasn't able to consume it almost. So I just consumed half of my sugar. Maybe it's a factor. It's a pretty short race, so perhaps not too big of a factor. But, you know, every little bit counts. And so it is a factor for sure. Um, the other thing was that it's... Just, I'm just looking at my computer screen. The other thing is that uh, I had a really stressful day before. Traveling with my dad, traveling to Gutenberg. Uh, our train was cancelled halfway and we had to get off and find a bus and take this route to get... It was just like a stressful day. We arrived late in the city at the hotel. I had a late dinner. Uh, I had poor, a poor night's sleep. My stress hormones was up. It was just a stressful day before. Uh, fun, but stressful. Uh, so that, that might be a factor as well in terms of how I performed on race day, for sure. Um, we could also say, was I not running enough, enough mileage, perhaps consistently in the weeks leading into the race, perhaps, because I mean, I did have a bit, a few bumps in the road uh, this spring in terms of uh, being sick and that sort of thing. So, I mean, maybe more consistent training would have, would have made me more fit. I mean, it definitely would. Perhaps that's a factor. I did run a 10K race, just, th is it three weeks, three or four weeks? prior to the race, which I feel like is a little bit too close for ideal conditions. Maybe I'm not fully recovered from that. Maybe my muscles was, weren't fully recovered. Maybe, I don't know, perhaps not. Um, could have been a factor. Did I run my threshold sessions a little bit too hard? Whether I did it or whether, I, whether that affected me or not, I feel like I did actually do that. I did run my threshold sessions in this buildup just a tad too hard. Looking back, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I've learned 
that I need to back off a little bit and rather than just hammering it absolutely right a little bit on the high end every time I do a threshold session I'm just gonna do it more conservative uh, next time uh, to not wear out perhaps I was peaking too soon basically and not feeling optimal on race day uh, there's also the X factor you know there's always something that maybe we can't quantify or can't put our finger on exactly what it is but sometimes you have a good day sometimes you have a bad day and it's not always easy to find out why that is um, so there's an X factor there as well so yeah and of course there's also the fact that I have gained two kilos of fat since my last race so if you consider that uh, maybe this time would have been more or less equal to my last performance six months ago and um, and uh, yeah, I also wore heavier shoes you know maybe grasping for straws there but you know there are a lot of little things that's what I feel like it is there's a lot of little things that were um, not ideal for this race and whether or not all of those things mattered I don't know but one thing I do know and that is that the fact that I thought the race uh, course was flatter whereas in fact it was very hilly um, that sort of threw me off because my pacing was then not appropriate for the race my goal was not appropriate for the race and I ended up running uh, too fast in the first um, half and just crashing and burning in the second half essentially so if i had better information i would adjust my goal i would slow my pace a little bit and i would probably be able to hold that pace more even and probably run a 132 or 131 so i feel like that's the main reason but there are other little details as you heard on the good side on the pro side uh, i came through the race with no structural issues no pains not afterwards not during no nothing wrong in my legs my feet that's the first for me so that means my 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 legs and my body is able to tolerate the distance and the stress very well so that's a pro and there's also another thing that I'm proud of is that I was not giving up I pushed through and I persevered and it was a big mental challenge for me and I've learned so much about my body and uh, my mind and uh, and certainly also about pacing uh, in this race so and and also about l knowing the facts before you plan for a race because that was the biggest mistake I made I wasn't uh, I thought I knew the facts but I didn't so I got to make sure I know all the facts before my next race and my next race of course is the marathon in November in Nice and apart from the fact that I'll do several other races which are just like B races my next A race is that marathon and that marathon I've already run the course I've done two long runs on the course uh, and so I know the course so there's no surprises there that's a good that's a good thing yes 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 that's it um, it was an awesome trip it was an awesome experience and it was just epic on so many levels it was painful it was hard it was disappointing but it was also exhilarating and my dad ran a great race went 225 he wanted to go sub 230 he's 60 years old he's run this race several times before in his life and uh, yeah it was fun um, to join him and for him to show me around the race and just say check it out isn't this awesome and it was so many people such a big I think it's the biggest half marathon in the world in terms of participation so really really cool experience and now it's just recovery time for me and then on to my next goal and for sure I am going to crush sub 130 at one point fairly soon I hope if I reach my goal for, I'm, I'm gonna announce it right now I want to go sub I think I've said it already but I think I want to go sub three hours in this can I do that is it unrealistic perhaps but if I am able to do that then I will effectively go sub 130 twice in that race in five four or five months when I say it now it sounds almost unrealistic I guess and it probably is on the high end of what's realistic but I will be losing a little bit of weight fat before that time and I will be doing a lot of training before that time and I will certainly pace myself perfectly I hope on that day so maybe I will break 130 twice the next time to make up for the fact that I didn't do it now we'll see 
leave your comments down below to let me know what you think about my race and uh, maybe you have some advice even um, if you want to know more details you could follow me on Strava and look at the the race details there's a link in the description and uh, yeah that's it also if you're interested in like insider content exclusive content regular video snippets with no editing uh, monthly q a's all that good stuff you should check out my new patreon page for the lone trail and uh, there's also a link in the description for that all right thanks for watching thanks for following along thanks for subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video all right bye